We're excited to bring to you our worship service today. You'll be able to watch some praise and worship. And so just join with us in worshiping the Lord and then you'll learn from God's word the principles that are gonna transform your life. So sit back and enjoy the blessings that God has for you today. you're glad today yes. hallelujah well turn over with me if you have your Bibles if you'd like to uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 10 Matthew 5 and verse 10 Jesus is here the same Jesus that was there that day is here today And he said, blessed are you when men persecute you, revile you, and say all manner of evil against you. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. You are the salt of the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Today the Lord comes to you and he tells you you're blessed. Now, Jesus, speaking to the disciples, wants them to understand what it means to be a disciple. You know, when you make a decision to follow Jesus, Jesus said you need to take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. So Christ begins to reveal to them that sometimes when you take up your cross, that means that just as he was persecuted, he said you will be persecuted for righteousness' sake. Sometimes there's going to be a price to pay for your faith. But you know what? When your faith is so valuable to you, you are willing to go through whatever you have to go through to follow him. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 
He said, you're blessed when you're persecuted. When people, some people will revile you because you follow him, because you follow your Savior. They don't understand. They'll persecute you and they'll even talk about you. Oh, she thinks she's better than me. No, she doesn't think she's better than you. She just thinks there is one named Jesus that she loves. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus didn't look down his nose at other people. He said, I came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be what? Saved. Saved. Amen. How many of you know today the Lord is not condemning you? He's here to save you. Hallelujah. He's here to deliver you. He's here to set you free from your guilt. He's here to set you free from your sins. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to know I know him today personally. I walked with him this morning. I talked with him in the middle of the night. Oh, I want you to know he goes with me every step of the way. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. He's my Messiah. He's my soon coming King. He's the one I love to sing about. He's the one I love to preach about. He's the one I love to tell other people about because Jesus Christ is my Lord. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, God gets a hold of you, doesn't he? And God got a hold of the Apostle Peter. Now, he had his moment of weakness. When fear came into his life, after they had taken Jesus, scourging him, and he saw the pain, and he said, I don't know him. I, I, I don't know Jesus. Oh, I've seen you with Jesus. Oh, no, not me. That was somebody else. Well, sure, it I, I saw you when he was teaching and ministering. Oh, it, it wasn't me. It was someone else. He denied the Lord three times, but he never forgot. Because I can see as Jesus passes by, I can see Peter as he's ashamed of himself later and thinks, how could I deny Jesus? I love him. How could I deny him? And he feels like there's no hope for him. You might have felt like that. There's no hope for me. Um, but Jesus passed by. And when he saw him look into his eyes, all the guilt, all the shame, all of it left. And he said, I'm willing to follow my Savior. Now, wherever he goes, I will follow him. And the Lord said, Peter, do you love me? Later on, after he was resurrected, and Peter said, You know I love you, Lord. He said, Then feed my sheep. And then the Lord asked him again, But Peter, do you love me? Well, Lord, you know I love you. Phileo, uh, the, the, in the Greek, uh, the friendship kind of love. And, and Jesus says, but do you agape me? Do you love me in a self-sacrificing way? And then he said, Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. Then do ministry. Then touch lives. Then tell people about what I can do in their life. Then go out and do the work that I've called you to do. Yesterday doesn't matter. Oh, he says, Simon, you're Simon, but I named you Peter. Petros, that means a rock. And I know you got weak in a moment. But he said, I've got news for you. He said, I'm going to use you. I'm going to touch your life. And I want you to pray and to go up with the other disciples and pray and tarry for 10 days. And he said, then there's going to be a power that's going to come from heaven. Oh, hallelujah. And you will be endued with power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. God can use people who have moments of weakness and make them strong into a rock. Oh, hallelujah. 
And it was the Apostle Peter who stood up on that day of Pentecost and preached. And the word went out. Thousands were saved. Because they said, this man Peter, we perceive that he's been with Jesus. Did you know when you've been with Jesus, people can perceive it. They can perceive it. This person's been with Jesus. There's something that's happening when this person's walking by. In fact, Peter could walk by in his very shadow. Somebody would be under his shadow and, and the presence of God would hit them and they'd be healed. This man that had been weak in that moment. Now he said, it doesn't matter what they do to me. I'm following Jesus. So they say... We're going to lock you up. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to put you in jail. We're, we're tired of, of hearing about all these people getting saved. Uh, all these people getting healed. All these people getting blessed. You know what? There are some people, they just get jealous. And they just can't stand it when somebody gets blessed. But I got news for you. God wants to bless. God wants to pour out. Somebody's bitter spirit won't stop it. Oh, hallelujah. I got news for you. The Lord Jesus Christ is here today to minister, to go into your life and to touch your life with his glory. Oh, he loves to bless you. He loves to pour out his glory into your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Lord told him, I can use you. And so they put Peter in prison and, and, and John. And, and they think that they can stop this revival that's going on. How many of you know you can put people in prison? But you can't shut up their spirit. And they said, whether it's right in your eyes to obey man, he said, we don't know. But this one thing we know, we can't help but preach the things that we have seen and heard. What would make a man preach this gospel even when he was put in prison? What would make a person go like Paul did and go and preach even when he had a scourging 39 lashes five different times? What must have his back look like? And they said, we've stopped him now. We beat him. Won't have to worry about him preaching anymore. The next day he's out. Let me tell you about somebody who's willing to come into your life. He doesn't care about your past. He wants to give you a future. Woo, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. He said, I've got to go and tell somebody about what the Lord's done. Oh, praise the Lord. He was stoned and left for dead in Lystra, Paul was. And yet he stepped going forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. He wasn't worried about his 401k. He wasn't worried about his retirement plan. He was worried about reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. You see, the Lord tells it like it is. He said, yes, you're going to go through some things sometimes. But he said, the value of your faith will be so valuable to you that you will stand the test. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that your faith today is of great value to you? Amen. Hallelujah. You see, because it means so much to you, it means that even though you may go through a situation and because of your faith in Christ, it could be that you might have some persecution. And I know we don't have a lot of physical persecution here in, in this country because we have freedom of religion because people were willing to shed their blood so that you and I could worship and have the freedom to worship our God in the way that the Holy Spirit shows us to worship. And we don't have to follow a man-made organization. We can follow the Holy Spirit 
Hallelujah. That means that my Savior is leading me through the Holy Spirit. And I want you to know that's why God, hit. there's no barriers with the people of God. Not in God's eyes. Man puts up barriers, but God puts out blessings. Oh, I want you to know the Lord wants to pour out a blessing on you that you can't even contain. He's got something for you. Hallelujah. People come to this church from all kind of backgrounds, but when they get here, they feel the Holy Spirit working in their hearts. And they want more of it. Because they want to experience God. And God wants you to experience Him. And I want you to know, this power of the Holy Spirit enabled them to go out and do the works that Jesus gave them to do. You see, I'm not preaching to you in my own power and strength. I'm relying upon the power of the Holy Spirit today. I want you to know I know in whom I have believed and I'm convinced He is able to keep that which I've committed unto Him against that day and I know that same Holy Spirit is moving in you and through you and listen to the voice of the Spirit today. You know, sometimes we've got so much of our own junk in the way. How many of you have ever moved? Yeah. Frank, I, I moved into the parsonage over here. And the last pastor had just in the middle of the night, all he had was a mattress. So he just took off. He had had all he could stay in and he was gone. Found out he had left the church, resigned the church, didn't you, Frank? But he seen me moving on all that stuff. And he said, well, honey, he looked over at friends. He said, honey, this guy, he can't move out in the middle of the night. He's got too much junk. <laughs> hey, man, that's my buddy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I tell you what. When, when, there's, when stuff is, there's too much, I remember all those boxes and everything. And how many of you know sometimes you need to, to get rid of some of the junk to make way so that you can walk the way you need to walk? You need to, you need to get rid of some of that clutter and you need to let God begin to lead you. And not let the past keep you from enjoying the present. Amen. And begin to say, hey, it does, you know what? It took a while to put away all that stuff. And you know, it does take a little time sometimes. But you know what? Once we got everything in its place, oh, life was so much better. And Debbie was so much easier to live with. Hallelujah. <laughs> That'll make you count your blessings. You brethren know where I'm coming from. Praise the Lord. And you see... The word, he said, rejoice. <laughs> Glory to God. Rejoice. And you know what? When it says be exceedingly glad, you know what? That means to leap. That means you're so happy you just, Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, how long has it been since you leaped with joy? Oh, hallelujah. He said, rejoice, Keith. <laughs> I know you're rejoicing. I just looked over there at him, and I could see his spirit was leaping up inside. Hallelujah. He looks laid back, but he's really leaping inside. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, it's time for the coat to go. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, I, I know sometimes guys will say that when they're ready to fight, but I'm ready to preach, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Because God speaks to our spirit and he says, I'm going to give you the strength for whatever battle you face. I got a text last night. Somebody was in the middle of a battle and said, I wish I could talk with my mom right now but she's gone on to heaven and and i said yes but i said that spirit is with you and i said i, I spoke to her the words from god that ministered to the spirit hallelujah because god had a message of hope because at that moment she was thinking about all the problems and she was overwhelmed with the problems 
But the Bible says, seeing that we have, uh, whereabout we have such a mighty cloud of witnesses that are surrounding us, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth so easily beset us. He said, there's a cloud of witnesses. There's the apostle Peter saying, I know I was there. Now, get up and go. Hallelujah. There's Paul saying, I know what it's like. I was there in that situation. But guess what? I looked unto my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. They thought I was dead in Lystra. They thought I was done. They thought they had stopped me. But God's Spirit came into me and I rose up. And then I went out and I won many other people to Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. You've got something to share with other people. Other people need what you have and some of them just don't know it yet. Amen. But you know what? You know it. And God has chosen you. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A chosen generation. That you might show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, hallelujah. Now... You are the salt of the earth. You see, because when people get around you, they're going to start getting thirsty. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I remember when, when I was playing football and they gave me a salt pill. Anybody ever had a salt pill? You don't want to have too many of them. <laughs> and, and that... that Gatorade was looking pretty good or whatever it was in those days. You know, God makes people thirsty as they're around you. Then they begin to say, hey, there must be something to this. I didn't really know if there was anything to this Christian stuff. But you know what? I'm beginning to wonder now because I see how valuable it is to you. Some of them are saying... Well, I'm too busy. I'm involved in this, and I'm involved in that. But they get around you, and all at once, they start asking you a question. And they start inquiring. And as they begin to inquire, see, that's the Lord just opening up that door. And then you begin to give them living water. Yeah. You see, the salt makes them thirsty. Yeah. You make them thirsty, but Jesus is the living water. Yeah. And when, oh, oh, glory, hallelujah. So then when you begin to give them Jesus, hallelujah, then they begin to find that their thirst is quenched by the glory of God. I want you to know, today, I know Jesus personally. How about you? Does anybody else know him personally? Does anybody else love him? Does anybody else want to praise him? Does anybody else want to glorify him? I'll rejoice and be exceedingly glad. And I tell you what, I tell people, I know you're going through something, I know, but still begin to rejoice and be exceedingly glad because you can see the blessings coming. Oh, praise the Lord. You see, people don't understand that. They don't understand when Paul and Silas, now we've just beat them. They're done for the night. We've, we've told them. Now they know. they got to quit preaching about Jesus. And they're over there saying, Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thine hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Oh, how great thou art. Can you imagine them singing those praises to the Lord? I can just see them as, as the guards are like, what are they doing? Didn't we just whip them? Didn't we just... <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, when the Holy Ghost shakes the jail. Oh, it was the first jailhouse rock. Amen. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The Lord shakes things up sometimes. You know, some of you need to let go and let God shake you up because some of you are tr you're trying to hold on to something you need to let go of. And the Lord says, just let go and let God. Hallelujah. Then you can rejoice. 
I love to see people rejoice. I love to see people set free. I love to see what prayer can do, don't you? Oh, hallelujah. You see, the Lord gets a hold of us. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. And he's getting a hold of you right now. And if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, right now can be your moment. Amen. You can receive this good news and you can begin to walk with him and you can begin to fellowship with him and he can begin to give you revelation and you'll begin to enjoy the lake better oh hallelujah you'll enjoy the blessings better oh i want you to know because all at once you'll be feeling the holy spirit as he moves right in and he works in your heart let's stand oh praise you jesus Praise God that you're able to be with us in our program today. You know, the Lord cares about what's going on in your life right now. He's speaking to your heart. So just open up and just say, God, I'm here. I'm available for whatever you have for me to do, Lord. I want you to pray this prayer with me at this time. Father God, I thank you right now that I feel your presence. I feel your spirit. I feel your love, I feel your mercy, I feel your grace. And right now, God, I know you're at work in my life. And Lord Jesus, I thank you that you're working out this situation I'm praying about. I don't know how, I don't know when, but God, I'm just trusting in you. And I know that you're working all things together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And God, that you can take whatever I'm going through and God, you can bring something good out on the other side. Lord, and I know, God, that your healing presence is within me right now. And I receive your healing into my life. Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you that you bore those stripes on your back for my healing. And Lord, I receive your ministry into my life right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, if you prayed this prayer today, you can look forward to seeing how God is going to open up doors. God's going to work the situations out. Just continue to trust in Him because, you know, God is a loving Heavenly Father. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, of whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. He's your God today. He is for you. And if God be for us, who can be against us? So we're praying for God's richest blessings in your life. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to invite you out to our church at the Souls Harbor Church at 451 West Helen Avenue in Punta Gorda, Florida. You know, the Lord is doing some wonderful things here as he is in many other churches. And so come and join us and you'll find an embrace. You'll find the love of God and you'll find the peace that Jesus brings. So until we speak again, we'll be praying for God's richest blessings upon you and your family. Have a great day.